Hi, I'm Mero. I don't know how else to say this, so I'm just going to say it. Today, I'm going to teach you how to draw and paint a cat. No, I don't mean like literally paint a cat. I mean the artistic way. I'm going to break the process down into simple steps so that anybody could do it, whether they're brand new at art or whether they've been doing it for a long time. The only thing that you'll need are paint brushes, paint, and a surface to work on. If you don't have canvas, all you need to do is buy something called gesso and put a layer of gesso over a piece of paper or cardboard. Let's begin. Step 1. Draw an oval shape with two triangles above it. Step 2. Draw another oval shape with another smaller triangle above it. Step 3. Draw the lines for the cat's mouth. It kind of looks like the inside of a Mercedes-Benz logo. Step 4. Add the eyes. Notice that they are also triangular shaped. Step 5. Add the body. Notice that it's about as tall as three of the oval shapes for the cat's head. Also, take a second to notice that this section is as wide as the cat's head. Step 6. Add the cat booty and tail. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. Step 7. Add the circles around the cat's triangular eyes. Step 8. Add the shape for the white patch of fur on the cat's chest, which connects to the shape around the cat's mouth. Step 9. Relax. You do not have to get this perfectly. Observe the stripes on the cat and try to add them in shading right now. Remember to generalize. This does not have to be perfect. Step 10. Take time to add shading on the cat's stomach and cat booty. Step 11. Shade the tail. Step 12. Relax once again. Observe from the reference image all of the tones on the cat's face and generalize them. This does not have to be perfect. Alright, so welcome to the painting tutorial. I am hopeful that at this point you have a recognizable image of a cat. If not, you know what, keep going because we're still going to be able to salvage that. One of the greatest properties of paint is once it dries, you can just do another layer over it. And I, I want to quickly say that I learned to paint before I learned to draw. And I might not have stayed with art uh, if it was uh, the opposite of that. Uh, but anyway, first thing I want you to notice, look at these edges. It is incredibly important. Um, soft edges here, we have a hard edge right here. Um, medium edge right in here, hard edge, um, kind of medium in here. But for the most part, you know, it's soft to medium edges everywhere. And uh, paint brushes are really, really great for, um, you know, creating these soft edges. I recommend that you use several paint brushes. I'll show you the brushes that I use in this uh, in a minute. But, um, you know, we're, do we're following the same strategy that we always do. We're breaking this down into shapes. Um, you know, for instance, there's a white, little white shape here, um, a bigger white shape in here. Uh, but we're really noticing the edges of these shapes. That is incredibly important. So this is my setup, and these are the materials that I used. Um, I used uh, lamp black paint, which is a, it's kind of a bluish black. Uh, and uh, I have zinc white, which is uh, a transparent white, uh, semi-transparent, I'll say. Titanium white is a totally, totally thick, opaque white. Uh, and you're going to see me use a lot of both of these. Keeping it grayscale, I later added a color uh, that kind of warmed up the, uh, the black a little bit. Um, you know, because it's a blue-black, I added a reddish-brown uh, to it, um, just so that I could get some of the warmer tones in there. If you're new, I'm probably making your head spin right now. Don't even sweat that, really. It's not a big deal. Just choose black and white. Um, up here, 
This is a painting medium that I use. Uh, basically, if I want my paint to be uh, runny or watery um, or put on very thin, I mix that in. And this is to clean my brushes. Uh, this is called uh, turpenoid. And basically what I do, and what I'm not showing here, is my paper towel. That is equal in importance. Before you even swish the brush around in here, you want to wipe it. And usually I could just get away with, um, you know, without even using much uh, turp. Um, I, some artists like it, uh, but I don't really use too much turp uh, when I paint. Uh, it's just a, you know, when I totally need a totally clean brush, I would wipe with the paper towel first. Then I would swish it around in the turp and then wipe around uh, wipe the paper towel again. These are the brushes that I used. This funny looking brush is great for blending. This is called a fan brush. It's very, very thin and very wide and really great for um, blending. Um, these smaller ones are called brights and uh, you know they're for putting details in. This is for ultra details. I've got a round brush, flat brush. Um, I tend to use these uh, both uh, for you know what I'm trying to fit. A lot of people are more familiar with Photoshop uh, and, you know, the brushes that you have there. It's the same concept with the older tools. Um, you know, a flat brush will give you a slightly different line and will carry paint differently than uh, a round brush, but it's really up to preference. Now it's time to paint. Uh, two words of advice before you even start painting. Don't worry. Um, a lot of people freak out uh, when it comes to painting, and they get, I, that usually happens when they get fixated on making the image look exactly like the photograph, and that's kind of pointless because the photograph exists already. Your job is to make it look like a cat, and you can certainly use the photo reference uh, to your advantage, but, you know, really, don't, don't feel like you have to make it look exactly. Um, you know, observe things, observe the edges. I use it for the edges, but um, if my cat looks a little bit different, so be it. That's fine. Um, I am putting in the half tones first. If you notice, the first thing that I did was I put in that neutral gray uh, right by the cat's rear end. And uh, then I followed that up with the darker areas. And um, I'm going to continue that when I do the head uh, again. You're going to see me put in the um, the neutral tones first, and that helps me judge um, how dark and how light things are, and I just go from there. Um, edges, like I said, are important. Uh, I showed you when we examined the photograph that, um, you know, the edges of the outside, but you know what? There's different shapes that are going on on the inside, too. For instance, if you look at the chest, uh, there is a darker uh, area that cuts into the lighter area, um, underneath, there's actually a few, and those are some pretty sharp edges. So I'm trying to put those in. Um, I'm trying to notice that the shoulder, shoulder area is a little bit darker. And, you know, really use this time to observe and use the brushes to mimic the texture. It's a lot nicer, if you think about it, uh, when, than when using pencil because we have these uh, tools that have a wider tip and um, also a softer tip, so we can totally recreate the, um, the feel of fur, whereas if you were using a pencil, you'd have to do like tons and tons of really precise cross-hatching. If you notice, I'm not really using too much uh, turp. And before I forget, um, you know, I, it took me about two hours to paint this. Take your time. Uh, you might not have two hours, but, uh, you know, observe the reference image, but don't don't worry about making a perfect copy of the reference image. That would be my advice. I have another thing that I want you to remember. Uh, a paper towel is equally important to a paintbrush. And the paper towel uh, essentially uh, prevents uh, the paintbrush and the paint from getting too muddy. And when you're working in one layer, just like I'm doing right now, you want to prevent that as much as possible. Uh, you don't really see me going for the turpenoid too much, you know, the liquid up there. Uh, but you do see me, um, well, actually, you, you're not even able to see me um, wiping my paintbrush. But just trust me, I wipe the paintbrush a lot. That's very, very important. Um, I'm using several paintbrushes, too. If you're using, like, one or two, you're not using enough. Think about this. You could use a dry brush to move paint around. So you, you can apply with one brush and you could move paint around with another brush. 
uh, that's incredibly important uh, because if you move paint with a wet brush it's going to change the color and perhaps you don't want to change the color sometimes paint is in the right place but the surface the the edges uh, of a shape are not right uh, that's where um, you know you can blend two parts together with with one uh, paintbrush you know that's where that is uh, is really really handy in fact I'm gonna be doing that very soon um, you know with the the uh, face area of the cat you're gonna see me blend that dark area with the light area with a, um, a, a what you call it a dry brush so you have to get used to the tools there's no possible I know this video says step by step but there's no possible way um, you know that I could slow this down to the point where you see every single thing it's a lot of um, you know like uh, trial and error that goes on when you paint watch this you know try to notice what I do uh, but you know you're gonna have to experiment yourself and I'm telling you remember these two things higher than anything else use a paper towel um, you didn't think that artists value those so much I certainly do um, and two, use multiple 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 paint brushes and you'll get a feel for each one of them okay so um, that would be uh, two things that I would consider to be top advice for new painters here's another piece of advice that you might found uh, that you might find helpful uh, let's do a comparison of drawing versus painting uh, you apply marks uh, to uh, a drawing but you sculpt paint um, you know once uh, something is dry uh, I mean it, it is dry you're working with the dry medium when you're drawing you can hatch over it maybe it'll blend together a little bit but in terms of like moving things around moving tones around you are consistently sculpting paint so I see uh, sculpture as a much more close cousin of uh, painting than I do for drawing and it takes a while to get used to if you're used to just applying with like a pencil tip it might seem um, strange at first to use a paintbrush but uh, really you, you should uh, you should catch on pretty soon um, that is if you're applying the paint uh, the right way um, if it gets too messy uh, you know that you're using uh, too much paint just start with using the um, the tip of your paintbrush don't you know don't let your brush get more saturated than that but experiment with different lines once you figure out how to control the paint uh, then you will be absolutely fine with this because the possibilities are endless and it'll go faster than um, uh, than what you call it than drawing because you're working with a larger tip so we're starting to get towards the um, the end of this and uh, you know I'm about to add the whiskers um, I like the expression on his face this cat is too cute uh, and um, you know I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get that um, if you notice there's more than just a line at the mouth there's also a darker tone um, top of the head uh, you know make sure that you don't leave that flat make sure that you mimic the fur um, I observed that the uh, the ears are uh, going to be one of the lighter things on the face not quite as light as the highlight at the bottom of the face uh, but um, you know relatively lighter there's the highlight right by the right eye or the one on your left side uh, that's going to be pretty bright uh, make sure that you see that and add that you know just basically do what you always do break the image down into shapes and consider the edges of the shapes that's uh, equally important now let's say that you go too far with paint all you need to do because this is white paper all you need to do is uh, get some you know clean white paint and a totally clean paintbrush and you can go over it you can kind of like sculpt the edges however you want and you're gonna see me do that in a little bit to be honest with you um, since this is a study I did this with a um, like not a totally clean brush uh, which I kind of regret I got a little bit lazy there uh, but um, the effect you'll be able to see because I kind of went a little bit too far uh, there we go and um, you know I kind of softened the edge there and I could just put brand new uh, white paint over that and you know, just like I did and look you know we just moved that edge in and it works like magic that's what I'm saying paint is a sculptural material think of it that way oh and now you get to see me use that mysterious fan brush uh, we're at the e you know the end of this and um, you know I'm starting to put the finishing touches on with that um, 
it just basically softens things. It's a great tool for softening. It looks like a funky, you know, gimmicky thing. It's not a gimmick. It's something that's really, really helpful. Um, now I am making some decisions. This is what I mean by, you know, you don't always have to go by the photo. I'm, I'm hardening some edges, and I'm thinking, all right, what, what would a cute cat look like? And, uh, you know, I'm kind of putting that in there. Like his face, I'm putting his, uh, yeah, I'm putting some more stripes on. And uh, we're really starting to finish this up. So uh, hopefully you like this. If you learned something, hit that like button. And I thank you for watching. Keep those requests coming. Thanks again, everybody.